The Leaving Cert and Junior Cert Irish Oral Exams are just around the corner and you are probably watching this video right now because you're an exam student who is currently binging Leaving Cert videos in a state of panic and you are procrastinating from real study by watching educational videos so you feel like you're studying when in reality you are getting f***ing nowhere. But do not worry because if you're trying to learn some valuable study tips that your teacher won't tell you then you have come to the right video. Firstly, before I jump into the content of the oral exam, let's start off by discussing how you should present yourself when you're conversing with the examiner. The best advice I can give you is to just be yourself. The examiner will lose interest in you if they notice you're pretending to be someone you're not, so you should retain your own personality and the exam will go great. Of course, you have to be polite when you're talking to this examiner for the first time, so I would advise you to pull out their chair before they sit down and offer to take off their jacket for them. And I'm sure you've been told by your teacher not to bring your phone into the exam, and I fully agree with that. Remember that you're having a conversation with the examiner, and if you're looking at your phone during the exam instead of focusing on them, they are going to find this rude and disrespectful. As is the case with everything else in life, first impressions are important, so you should be confident and friendly when you walk into the exam room, and you should greet the examiner with a smile. Dear Grace, I screwed a whore. Uh, is she she so watchy? Now let's familiarize ourselves with the structure of the exam. The oral examination is divided into four sections. The Faltu, the Don, the Shropic Tour, and the Cora. The Faltu is worth five marks and it is the easiest section by far. Basically, if you don't know how to answer these questions, then you may as well say slang a fold to the examiner and walk right out the door. The examiner will ask you for a few basic details about yourself, such as your name, your address, the 12 digits on your credit card, uh, the three digits on the back, the expiration date, and your exam number. If you want to practice for this section, you can leave your answers to the fall two questions in the comment section below. It's a very simple start to the exam which should help you to ease your nerves before you move on to the poem. All right, so there are five poems on the course, one of which the examiner will ask you to recite out loud. Uh, just to recap, there's the poem about a sad animal in the zoo. Uh, there's one about the married couple getting a divorce for no fucking reason. Uh, one of them is basically a diss track against the poet's husband. And there's the other two that everybody wants to avoid. I fully understand the thought process of a six year student because I did the leaving search myself last year. And I know that you want Gavin. Koskara and McGraw saw are alright at best. And the other two are the social outcasts of the poetry lineup that nobody likes. But there are several reasons why you do not need to pray for Gavin to come up. First of all, that is blasphemy. And secondly, if you do not get Gavin, just slide a fiver to the examiner and ask for Gavin. This may sound like a risky move which could potentially jeopardize your entire leaving cert, but don't worry. I used this method myself last year when I was presented with Spalpeen Fawnock and I got on fine in my leaving cert. I'm a film student now and I'm also a YouTuber and... Actually, no, don't do that. So we'll just forget about the bribery and let's just say you're backed into a corner in the exam and you're presented with one of the more difficult poems in the course that you did not want. You really have no choice but to play the hand you're dealt and to make the most out of it. But you can easily secure top marks with one little trick. Of course, your pronunciation and your fluency are both very important. But what separates a 30 mark student from a 35 mark student is the emotion. It's not enough to simply read the poem with perfect pronunciation. You're not relaying the story of the sad animal in the zoo. You have to be the sad animal in the zoo. You're not aiming to impress the examiner. You have to seduce the examiner. If you read the poem in a monotonous tone with no emotion whatsoever, then you are just yeeting 35 marks into the busca brusker. Remember that you must read the title and the poet's name before you recite the poem itself. And then you will leave a little pause. During these few seconds, you are going to make direct eye contact with the examiner. This will waste some time so you won't spend as long in the Quora section, and it will show the examiner that you feel the poem. Read it slowly, read it softly, and make sure to keep full eye contact with the examiner while you're reading the poem, and you will have 35 marks in the bag. Arguably the most intimidating part of the Irish oral exam is the Shropic Tour. I completely understand how frustrating they are. The Irish government desperately wants the Irish language to be more prominent, so in order to teach Gwilga to young people, they consciously decided that forcing you to learn not one, not two, not ten, but twenty black and white Irish comic books was the way to go. It is a ridiculous concept, and I would advise you not to waste your time learning how to describe all twenty word for word. Shropic tours are a f***ing joke, 
and your study time is much better spent revising anything else. For example, if you only learn 19 shrot victors, then you are subjecting yourself to the curse of picking up the one shrot that you did not learn, which renders your hours of study completely useless. To avoid falling into this trap, you should really just learn one or two shrot victors and hope for the best. If you get one of them, then well done, you beat the system. But if you pick up any of the other 18 or 19 shrots, shit happens. But what if I told you that there is a simple solution if you do not get the Shropic Tour that you wanted? If you go to a decent school like I did, then you should have a dedicated Shropic Tour folder which contains all your pictures and the corresponding notes. This may sound like a long shot, but you should place this folder in the nearest bathroom before you queue up outside the exam room. If you pick up a Shropic Tour that you don't know very well, you can use the allocated 30 seconds of thinking time to your advantage. What you're going to do is ask the examiner if you can run out to the toilet really quickly, ask Wilga before you begin, you're going to open up your folder in the bathroom, you'll look through your notes for your selected Shropic tour, and you're going to head back to the exam room as soon as possible. This plan is mostly foolproof, but I had one little slip up when I tried it last year, which I hope you will learn from. Our exam room was in the same corridor as the principal's office and the reception desk, so I was unaware that I had placed my Shropic tour folder in a staff bathroom. So because of an awkward encounter with my school principal, I wasn't able to enter the cubicle where I'd hidden my folder, so I apologised for walking in on her and I went straight back to the exam room. However, if you simply use the classic phrase, on will piada gon dolgadi on leveris, you should have no trouble exiting the exam room, and of course, just make sure you choose your bathroom wisely so you can avoid making the same mistake that I made. For the Shropic tour, you should be able to improvise when you're describing each picture. You have been learning the language for 13 years after all, so you should have a cornucopia of standard phrases learned off and ready to go, such as Vi an green ich gulten a gluck, Vi mi ich schul ich an boher, Gatoben, han ich kar, Legen ich gekormuker de skrud fa per, Kein fa gwil ma ma laba. Don't forget that you need to be prepared to ask and answer three questions about your selected trial when you're finished. You should be able to fly through this part if you have a few universal questions learned off and if you ask three completely different questions. If you rely on the same question for each picture, it's going to be pretty embarrassing. We all know that the general conversation is the main meat of the oral exam, and it may be scary to think about. But if you take my advice and waste as much time as possible in the first three sections, then you should be able to cut down on the time spent in the Quora by about two or three minutes. If I can just break character for a minute and give you some genuine advice, I would advise you to never bring up anything that you're not ready to talk about in the exam. I learned this lesson the hard way in my mock Irish oral last year when I said that I love reading, despite the fact that I hadn't read a book since primary school. It wasn't a good look when the examiner asked me what kind of books I like, to which I responded with uh, 20 seconds of silence and... Hunger Games. Avoid you. Cut in Tauber is Uh... Is a Berla on Tauber is Berla? Berla? A sha, a Berla. A Tashe. Good. Is a shin gama as Berla. Mission on my lot of egg live. Sha, it's Bradlam of the egg live. Can you slice lower on my lot of egg live? Fuck. I think I've covered everything you need to know when you're doing the exam, but it's important that I give you some creative study advice too. Instead of reading a book for hours, you should record yourself on your phone speaking Irish and listen back to that whenever you get the chance. I think I've still got some of my recordings from last year actually. You get the idea. To finish off this advice video, I would urge you not to stress out over the oral exam. Just keep a cool head when you're speaking, stay confident, and don't rely on the same words and phrases for each question. Um, um, Thank you very much for watching this video and uh, if you're a Leaving Cert student who is looking for actual Irish oral advice then I apologize for wasting your time. Also just a quick disclaimer in case my friends at the SEC are watching this video, this was complete satire. I didn't actually try to bribe my examiner in my Irish oral last year and I also did not walk in on my principal in the toilet. It was the vice principal. The guy who played the examiner in this video actually has a YouTube channel too. Uh, it's not very good, but it's better than no child support, and he helped me to write some of the jokes in this video, so go check him out. You should also check out his Twitter account, where he posts quality tweets, such as... 
They always say, who are you, get out of my house. Never, how are you, get out of my house. Pooh is stored in the balls. Circumcised fellas act real smug till they need somewhere to store their change. So yeah, if you like bad content, you can check him out. And speaking of which, I should probably check out my girlfriend, who I keep in here now. I actually upgraded her room because of good behaviour, so I think I might give her this bottle of Ishka, which should last about 2 or 3 weeks or so. I'd also like to say a special thanks to Cormac, also known as Corian on YouTube. Uh, Cormac was our camera operator for all those little cutaway gags you saw in this video, and I would tell you to subscribe to his channel as well, but he watches anime, so... Alright, this video should be 10 minutes long now, so I'll see you in the next one. Best of luck in your Irish oral, and slang a fold.